My stepdad arrived home and before even entering the door, I could hear him yelling that the dog hadn't been walked. Wanting to defuse the situation, I walked outside and explained that I couldn't walk the dog. Hank was a huge Great Dane that had been passed down from when his father had died. We lived on a busy highway and this dog was just way too strong for me and had previously almost had me hit by semi-trailers. I was trying to get this point across but, as usual, we were both just yelling over top of each other. So my stepdad picked me up and he threw me off the veranda. The veranda wasn't high, maybe a little over four feet, but yeah, <laughs> what a reaction, huh? I actually didn't see that one coming. I landed just before the fence and as I got up, my stepdad was already down the stairs and by my side. He waited for me to get to my feet then pushed me up against the house. I remember exactly where I was because his hands were pressed so hard against my shoulders that I could feel I was pinned against the power box just under my bedroom window. His face was so close to mine and he yells, you want to hit me? I could see thick saliva pulled in the corners of his mouth and I could feel him trembling as he held his whole weight on mine. I had no intention of responding and I didn't have the chance anyway because he already had a fist clenched ready for me. Then I felt this hard blow to the left side of my face. I wanted to cry so badly, but I didn't. I stayed silent and still. I just, I didn't understand how he could take so much pleasure in my pain and I knew the only thing I had control of was my reaction and I didn't want to give him any more satisfaction by showing him how powerless I felt. Then mum yelled, get out. I looked over to see mum was pointing down the road. My stepdad and I looked at each other. We were both so out of breath from fighting and neither of us knew who mum was talking to. She looks at him and says, I'm sick of this shit. And then she looked at me and said, you know not to provoke. I was sure it was him who was told to leave, but I didn't want to ask and risk being wrong. I just didn't want a chance hearing that. So I left. I did feel like it was my fault and I did feel responsible. I mean, okay. I think physically abusing a 16 year old for not walking a dog is a ridiculous and extreme response. However, after four or five years of almost daily battles, I knew better than to talk back. I knew I had two choices that day. Apologise sincerely and walk the dog, or keep my mouth shut. I chose neither, I went rogue, and I absolutely knew the consequence of that. So still in my school clothes, I left and walked along the beach to, from my place to Harvey's. It took about an hour, and I had no idea what to do once I got there. I just, I didn't know where else to go. I kept walking in the hopes of seeing Harvey and thought that maybe I could stay with him for a while, but he wasn't home. I looked up some familiar streets until I found him getting into his car with his friends and their surfboard. I walked up to him and told him what happened and asked if I could hang out with him for a while, but Harvey just rummaged through his ashtray and gave me 50 cents to get the train home. And yeah, <laughs> this was 96 or 97, so yeah, it was only 50 cents to get the train, it's crazy. I noticed Harvey's friend was looking at me and when I made eye contact, he just looked down at his feet. Then Harvey jumped in the car and his friend gave me a sympathetic smile and got in with him. I felt like his friend wanted to say something, but I knew this guy. I went to school with him. He was only 14. What was he going to do or what was he going to say? He couldn't help when Harvey didn't. So I caught the train home and I walked to my nan's house. I explained that I thought I'd been kicked out of the house, but I really wasn't sure, so my pop drove up to mum's. My pop wore a patch over the hole where his eye used to be. I was convinced he lost it in a tragic mining accident because that's the story he told me when I was really little. It wasn't until I was in my 30s that I found out he actually lost his eye from a pebble being flung at him while mowing the lawn. My pop would mow the lawn in nothing but boots and the smallest, tightest bungee smugglers and these super tight swimmers had an Australian flag on the bum. But after the day he lost his eye, he also started wearing big clear safety glasses. But whatever the story was or how often it changed, I just loved that my pop looked like a pirate. No one explained to me what happened between my mum, pop and stepdad, but it did turn out that I jumped the gun and it was my stepdad who was told to leave, and he had. So pop drove back and told me to go home. I walked home thinking about how much my pop cared for me. He rarely drove that car. I'm not sure if it was an 80s or 90s model, but he called his green Toyota Corolla his Rolls Royce and he treated it that way. He polished it way too often and he would ramble on about how the seats were not allowed to be moved due to the importance of preserving the cogs. 
I'd never seen anyone so much as sit in that car, not even my pop. Pop didn't offer me a lift home that day, but I felt loved because it was a rarity for him to drive that car and he drove that precious car for me that day. Howdy. So this was fun, painting the individual tiles or canvases, but then putting it all together in one piece. And I really do like to stencil. I do that a fair bit. I haven't framed this one yet. Uh, the other, the other frames that I've been using have been white, but I'm thinking I might put a black frame around this one. I don't know, comment below if you disagree with that. But as usual, this is a mess and chaos of colour, but this one's a bit extreme and I really enjoy it. Um, yeah, it's a bit hectic on the eyeballs, but I love it. I also do like painting in monochrome. I'll pick two, three, four shades of the one colour and go with that, or I use every colour. And I do try to pick a simpler colour palette, but I don't tend to be able to stick to it. I'm sort of one extreme to the next, find it a bit uncomfortable in the middle. I'm working on it, but I also want to be authentic in my artwork. So, you know, this is sort of more my style and that's what I want to stick to. I am going to scooch over to this side of the camera to introduce my pup, who this piece was inspired by. Um, isn't he freaking adorable? Hi Pop, welcome to my channel. Um, sorry, I sound like a crazy person right now and I'm babbling as usual. But if you do want to follow me, all my links are down below, my social medias and stuff. Um, it depends if you want to hear me still babble on about stuff, especially my chooks. I'm a bit obsessed with my chickens, but you know what, I'm babbling again. I'm getting off camera. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.